The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hi, everyone. We're going to take a look again at a portion of God's Word from Psalm 23. Before I read our verse for today, I want to ask you something about this cup. Do you think this cup is half full or half empty? Right? It's the classic question. Are you an, you an optimist or a pessimist? Are you an optimist who sees the glass half full? Or are you a pessimist who sees the glass half empty? Or are you an analyst? who says, well, technically it looks like it's about 45% full because, you know, it's a, the cup is a little bit wider up here and a little narrower down here. And so actually it's maybe 40 or 42% full. Uh, regardless of what you think about it, I want you to ask you just in general, do you feel like in your life, do you feel like your cup is full? Or do you feel like it's half full? Or, or less than half? Or maybe you even just feel drained in life? The reason why I ask is because God's going to use that picture for us in Psalm 23, verse 5. In Psalm 23, we're kind of used to this imagery of God is our shepherd and we are the sheep. But he actually gives us a totally different picture in verse 5. So I'm going to read it to you. It's like God is inviting us to a banquet. Here's what he says, Psalm 23, verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And we're gonna think especially about that last phrase, my cup overflows. Um, as you think about your life, do you feel like your cup overflows? Does your life feel full and, and just brimming over with joy and with happiness and experiences? Or do you feel maybe like your cup is half full or do you feel like it's maybe even less than that? You know, I think it's hard. It's hard for us to feel like our cup is overflowing in this world. I mean, especially just, just the world we live in. Think about this. Um, with, with the internet and with the smartphone and with all the, the tools that are at our disposal, it's easy to think that we're missing out on something. Right, you look at the way the world lives, you look at the people around you, and you're probably missing out on some sort of experience, a vacation, a, a trip, an activity, or you're missing out on, on some form of relaxation that someone else is having. Maybe you feel like you're missing out on some, some content that you wanna take in. I mean, just think, I mean, there's, there's books right here with me, but how many books in the world are inaccessible to you? Not many. Right? There are so many books that you could read, not to mention the, the, the shows and the movies that you could watch. And they're all available to you either, either for free or for a small price. And so there's always this feeling, well, it's all accessible to me. And therefore, if I'm not experiencing some of that, I must be missing out. And we compare our lives to the lives of others. And social media and stuff also doesn't help with that because then we compare our lives to someone else's highlight reel and it's right in front of us. And so it leaves us feeling sometimes like, our cup is not full because we're missing out on something. Or maybe even it makes us feel like, you know, I have a cup, but that person has a pitcher and the next person has a five gallon pail. And it looks like that guy over there has a full Olympic sized swimming pool compared to this little cup that I have. We have a fear of 
missing out and we play the comparison game and sometimes that just makes us feel like our cup is not all the way full. I mean, it could be that or just that life has you feeling drained. Uh, the stress and just the lack of sleep, all the things that you're asked to do and you don't feel full. And that's why I need you to hear these words from Psalm 23. My cup overflows. Because regardless of where you're at today and how you feel about your life and how full your cup is, I want you to know that these words, my cup overflows, they are true for you. If you are in Christ, if you are in God's family, if you believe in Jesus as your savior, then this is true about you. Your cup overflows. Regardless of what you might feel or what you might see in the world around you, I can promise you, your cup overflows. Let me tell you why. Because in Christ, God has given us so many spiritual blessings that is truly more than we could comprehend, more than our cup could possibly hold. I wanna talk about just a few ways that that's true. Uh, your cup overflows with forgiveness. And don't, don't overlook that. Your cup overflows with forgiveness. You have a God whose forgiveness does not run out. And he pours it into you daily so that regardless of what you have done during that day and the ways you have failed and the ways you feel like you have not measured up, there is enough forgiveness for you and more. That no matter what sin or guilt you feel and that you carry, it all is paid for by what Jesus did for you on the cross in dying and giving his life for you. And so your cup overflows with forgiveness. And you can start each day and you can say, today, I am forgiven. Today, I am holy in God's eyes. And my cup overflows with that. And that sets my identity for the rest of the day. Your cup overflows with forgiveness. But not just that. Our cups overflow with God's compassion. When you think about the challenges of your life, the things that are stressing you out right now, I bet that there's some part of that that's it's hard to explain to other people. Hard to exactly put into words just how you're feeling and just what's bothering you. But do you know that when it comes to that sort of stuff, you don't have to be able to put it into words for God to understand it and for God to care about it? God not only knows how many hairs are on your head, but he knows the hurts of your heart and he knows the tears you've cried and he knows all of it. He knows exactly how you feel and he feels for you. He has compassion for you. He doesn't think, well, you know, just get over it, figure it out. No, he loves you. He loves you and he cares about it. And so our, our lives, our, our cup overflows with God's compassion. He's always more loving and more compassionate than we could we could truly understand. Uh, your cup also overflows with God's wisdom. What a true treasure it is to have the word of God. And maybe we don't read it all that often, but what, what in, is in here is, is overflowing with wisdom for life, with guidance, with truth about who God is and about who you are. And this is overflowing with goodness and wisdom and knowledge. And, and maybe I don't look at it quite as much as I could, but man, this is, this is overflowing and if I would really realize the treasure that I have here, I would see that my cup overflows, that I may be worried about all the content that I could possibly take in, but what's in here that makes my life overflow. My life is also overflowing. My cup is also overflowing with, with divine power and control. Do you realize that by what Jesus did, he put to death our fear. And it may feel like life is out of control or there's things that we're not in control of and we don't know what's gonna happen, but I can promise you, God is on the throne. God is in control. And it might not feel like it, but God is. And God can work through all sorts of life, experiences and situations, difficult things, even evil things. And he can take those things and repurpose them and work them for good. I, I can't see how all this, but I can, I can promise you that God does do that. So your cup is overflowing with God's control, God's power, God's protection. 
And this is not to mention all the other wonderful things that, that I can't even mention during the time that we have and I can't maybe even fully comprehend, right? Our cups overflow with, with God's peace, right? Our, our cups overflow with God's protection and his watching over us and with his love and, and all sorts of wonderful things. Um, our cup truly does overflow. And not because I've been such a good guy that God is gonna just pour this into my cup, but because of who I am in Christ. Because in Christ, I am God's redeemed son. I'm a child of God because of what Jesus did for me. And so I can say my cup truly overflows. I am filled up and I have exactly what I need today. You have exactly what you need today in Christ. It may not look like it by the standards of the world, but truly your cup is overflowing. Now, what would be really cool would be if I took this cup and as a cool visual illustration, if I took a, a big jug of water and just poured it in here and it was overflowing everywhere. But as you can see, I'm in our school's library, so I'm not gonna do that, but you can imagine that happening. And I would tell you, look, our, our lives and our cups are just overflowing with goodness. And I'd be getting all wet and all the school would be getting wet too. But I won't do that. But you can keep that a visual illustration for you today that your cup overflows because of what Jesus has done for you. Let's pray about that. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings you give us in a material way, but also all the spiritual blessings you give us. Help us to see that, to believe that, despite the circumstances around, uh, around us. Help us to believe that our cup overflows and help us to see your goodness every single day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Still and 